So uh, first, uh, uh, note that uh, so this you can consider as as an exercise. Also, you can try this one uh, for any point x in R n. Uh, R n minus x is homeomorphic to S n minus one. So, <clears throat> so this you can consider uh, as an exercise and try to. A uh, construct and its explicit uh, homeomorphism. So idea I can give that uh, if you just consider this uh, R two and in place of x you can consider uh, 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 this origin zero uh, zero. Uh, so so if you just consider this, okay. So you just remove this point. Uh, then uh, what you can do is then you can consider this. Uh, uh, so when you are in uh, uh, so these lines, right? So these are yes, these lines. Uh, these are basically this is your R two minus zero, right? So these lines you can map. uh so you can see that this is basically your s1 so uh this you can map to uh this uh so what you can do is uh for every uh so given any line right so suppose uh, uh, this corresponds to uh, uh, uh this lambda x okay lambda x right uh or x s1 right so every line uh uh here uh you can write as lambda x where x belongs to s1 and this lambda uh you can vary uh from 0 to infinity okay so lambda belongs to 0 to infinity and this uh this r2 minus uh uh zero you can uh, means divide it split it into this uh, union of these such lines right so basically your r2 minus zero equal to you can write as uh union uh, uh lambda x where lambda belongs to zero infinity And x belongs to s1, right? So I think you you will agree with this. Similar kind of thing you can do with r n minus zero, right? Of course, you see that r n minus zero will be uh, homeomorphic to r n minus x. This uh, you know is what will be the homeomorphism. Okay. Uh, so uh, it is enough to prove that r n minus 0 is homeomorphic to r n minus 1 as a task r so 
So this so you can write like this. Now you can map, uh, you can uh, define uh, a map from here to S1 minus R by F of lambda X to be uh, here uh, X comma uh, this lambda. So in place of lambda, what you do have to do? Uh, so let me let me just give you a um, uh, bit uh, more explicit uh, construction. Uh, so uh, let let G uh, from zero infinity to R be a homeomorphism. Homeomorphism. So there can be many homeomorphisms from uh, this open interval to R, right? So you can choose any one of them. Uh, so you can I mean, this. I, I I will leave this to find out one, right? Uh, now uh, define. Uh, we have Rn minus zero. This we can write as uh, union of lambda uh, so this is this lambda x uh, lambda belongs to zero infinity and X belongs to S n minus one. Okay. Now define uh, now define F from Rn minus zero to Sn minus one cross R by F of lambda x equal to uh, this uh, x comma G of lambda. Okay. So you can see that uh, this uh, so uh, you can verify uh, that F is uh, bijective and F is continuous and inverse of F is continuous. So how do you do this? Uh, uh, this uh, so first uh, this uh, so F is uh, going to be subjective. Uh, uh, it is uh, clear, right? Uh, because uh, because of this, okay. Uh, because G from here to here is bijective, so F is going to be subjective because for every uh, for every point uh, here, every point here, it will be of the form some. Um, x comma y where y is in r and x will be in uh, sn minus 1 okay now y is in r it means there is some lambda such that g lambda equal to y okay now consider this lambda x and consider image of uh, 
lambda x under f that is f lambda x. So f lambda x is going to be definitely uh, this uh, x y. So f is surjective uh, and what about injectivity? So you can uh, consider two points x lambda 1 x 1 uh, equal to f lambda 2 x 2. So this implies that x 1 comma g lambda 1 equal to x 2 comma g lambda 2. Okay, it means x1 equal to x2 and g lambda 1 equal to g lambda 2 but g is bijective and hence it is injective in particular hence this implies lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 so x1 equal to x2 and lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 implies lambda 1 x1 equal to lambda 2 x2 hence uh, f is bijective injective uh, thus f is uh, bijective right now continuity, how we'll, uh, uh, how we'll uh, uh, verify. So continuity, uh, you can consider, uh, it is enough to show that uh, component functions are continuous. So lambda x going to, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, lambda x going to uh, lambda upon lambda x upon lambda that is uh, uh, x this is a continuous function okay so basically uh, this lambda is uh, uh, yeah so basically it is this function lambda is non zero uh, because lambda belongs to zero infinity so this is nothing but actually this you can see that lambda x norm is uh, equal to mod lambda k uh, and then norm x right but now x belongs to sn minus 1 so norm x is 1 so it is mod lambda Okay. And lambda is non-negative, it is zero infinity. So this is basically this is lambda. Now mod lambda is nothing but lambda. So norm lambda x is nothing but lambda. So basically this is the mapping uh, this uh, lambda x going to lambda x upon this, right? see this mapping so this is a continuous mapping so this component is continuous you can see and uh, this lambda x going to norm lambda x what is this norm lambda x it is lambda right so lambda x going to lambda is a continuous function because x going to norm x is a continuous function okay because norm uh, is uh, you might have seen uh, uh, that norm is a continuous function. So this is, uh, if we compose with the, this uh, with g, g is continuous. So this goes to g lambda. So lambda x going to g lambda is continuous. So both the components are continuous and hence uh, f is continuous. So f is bijective, f is continuous. And what about the inverse? Uh, what about inverse? So x g lambda uh, so we can consider this function uh, this goes to x comma lambda okay because this g is continue this g is a homeomorphism g inverse okay so over x x you this component you keep as it is and you apply uh, g inverse on this component so this is a continuous function now this is uh, actually lambda x 
so this is this also is a continuous function so composition of continuous function is continuous so this is inverse also inverse of f also is continuous so f is a homeomorphism so so with some gaps i have given you the construction of this the homeomorphism between rn minus 0 and sn minus 1 cross r now uh now you know that this rn minus 0 uh you can define the homeomorphism between this and this how will you do that uh you can just uh, map y to uh uh y plus x then what will happen okay can map like this then it will take this to this so 0 point 0 though it is not here it will go to x so x is not here so um, right so this is a homeomorphism this is a homeomorphism from here to here so rn minus Zero is homeomorphic to R n minus x, and this is homeomorphic to S n minus one cross R. So this is homeomorphic to this. Now uh, we can use our result that uh, this pi one x cross y equal to pi one x. Cross pi one y. Okay. So this because this uh, S n minus one R R n R R n all these are path connected. So we are not uh, writing the we, we can skip uh, we can uh, avoid uh, writing the base point. So. So we have pi one r n minus x because r n minus x is homeomorphic to uh, s n minus one cross r. This is homeomorphic to pi one s n minus one cross r. Okay. and this is homeomorphic to pi 1 sn minus 1 cross pi 1 r and pi 1 r because r is simply connected uh, it is trivial so this is homeomorphic to pi 1 sn minus 1 because pi 1 r to trivial 0 now hence For n uh, greater than strictly greater than two, so if n is greater than two, means n is greater than equal to three. So n minus one is greater than equal to two. So this will be uh, uh, this will be uh, trivial if uh, n is greater than two. Okay. Uh, so. Zero and inject. So for n equal to one, two, uh, this is uh, pi one s one, right? Pi one s one is jet. Now. Uh, 
you have uh, a corollary that R2 is not homeomorphic to Rn for R not equal to 2. So now suppose that there is a homeomorphism. Suppose uh, f from R2 to Rn is a Schism so clearly, uh, uh Clearly, uh, n is not equal to one uh, because uh, R two minus zero zero uh, is connected. And R one minus F zero zero is not connected because if you, you remove a point from R one, it becomes disconnected. But R two minus if you remove a point from R two, it remains connected. So if there is a home a homeomorphism F from R two to R R1, then if you restrict f uh, over this R2 minus 0, 0 uh, then uh, you will get a homeomorphism from this to this, but this is connected and this is not connected, so this is not possible uh, to have a homeomorphism from here to here, hence f cannot be a homeomorphism from R2 to R1, right? So let us see. Uh, uh, for uh, other values of n, so for n equal to one, this is not uh, f is f is it is this this cannot be true. Now for n is uh, uh, greater than one. So we cannot use this idea. This trick we cannot use. Okay. Uh, so what uh, we'll do is Now, uh, for n greater than two, right? So of course, for n equal to one, n equal to two means uh, there is identity homeomorphism. There is no problem. For n is greater than two, uh, this uh, uh, fundamental group of R n minus uh, f of zero zero, right? This is trivial, okay? But pi one r two minus zero zero. This is z, right? So if uh, f is a homeomorphism from R2 to Rn for n greater than equal to n greater than 2, then restriction of f uh, over uh, R2 minus 0, 0 
uh, will be a homeomorphism from R two minus zero zero to R n minus f zero zero. Since this and this they are homeomorphic, uh, their fundamental group will be isomorphic. But this is uh, the thing that we have. This fundamental group is zero, and this fundamental group is z, and hence there cannot be homeomorphism from R two to R n for n greater than two. So one thing uh, uh, we have the observation. Uh, let p from x x naught to y y naught. Let uh, let's say C I right from Let P I from x x naught to y y naught be i equal to zero one be max. Okay, it means c naught and c one are continuous functions from x to y such that uh, they take x naught to y naught. Let uh, let uh, capital F be a homotopy from c naught. To C one. Suppose that capital F, F P naught and C one are homotopic, and capital F is a homotopy between them. Then uh, what we have? Uh, uh, for any loop F in X. In X big base point X naught, we have F composed C naught. Okay. Uh, F composed C naught and F composed C one are loops in Y with base point Y naught. So uh, I want to claim that these two loops they are homotopic. That is, uh, they are they have same loop class. Uh, By using the homotopy between C naught and C one, so 
So how we'll define the homotopy between these? So define uh, uh, define uh, G from I cross I to Y Y not. Uh, to y by g of t comma t prime equal to Uh, equal to uh, this is uh, so capital F So let us see what it works. So here you just see that g of t comma zero equal to uh, capital F of f t comma zero. But this is uh, basically uh, this is your uh, phi. Uh, not applied over f t and g of t one equal to capital F of t comma one equal to t one of t. So this will work. So uh, so clearly. And capital G is a homotopy topy and also we need to have that capital G uh, uh, zero T prime equal to capital F F zero uh, T prime equal to capital F uh, this is uh, your uh, F zero is X naught T prime and uh, so we have to consider the the uh, this capital F is a homotopy from uh, phi naught to phi one, and phi naught and phi one are maps between uh, x naught, x x naught, and y y naught. It means that uh, this homotopy will be relative to uh, will be relative to uh, x naught. Okay, this homotopy will be relative to x naught. So this uh, capital F X naught T naught is going to be of course Y naught, and uh, uh, this is basically going to be G one uh, G one T naught. Similarly, so clearly G is a G is a G is a homotopy of loops uh, between 
C not composed of and C not P1 composed of. So you should remember that we have we have taken homotopy between uh, C naught and P1, and because C naught and P1 are matched with the XX naught and YY naught, we have to consider capital F to be homotopy relative to X naught. So we have this. Hence. Uh, C naught uh, F class equal to P1 F class. This implies C naught star applied over F equal to P1 star applied over this class. This implies uh, what does it mean? It means that and F was arbitrary loop, right? So this is true for any loop class. So what we have is therefore, therefore, C naught star equal to P one star. Thus, if P naught and P1 are homotopic, uh, are uh, homotopic maps from X X naught to uh, Y Y naught. So when we call, say that homotopic map, this homotopy will be uh, uh, in this uh, category of uh, pointed uh, topological spaces, right? It means the homotopy will be relative to X naught. So we have this. Uh, next, uh, we have. So we have this proposition. Uh, if A is a B retract of X, then the homomorphism I star from pi 1 A X naught to pi 1 X X naught induced by the inclusion map is injective. If A is a deformation retract of X, then I star is an isomorphism. So let us uh, discuss the proof. So we have already seen that if uh, uh, we have uh, a uh, uh, continuous function uh, between two topological spaces, then it induces a homomorphism between their fundamental group. Uh, so uh, here, what we have, uh, let I, let A be a deep retract, retract of uh, X, that is, that is, Uh, that is uh, this inclusion, right? From A to X has a uh, left uh, homotopy topy inverse. Inverse. Say, uh, uh, just take something, uh, maybe uh, u from x to e. So we have uh, I composed u is homotopy to I e, right? Now we have already seen that uh, if you have two homotopic maps, then they induce uh, same uh, kind of same homomorphism, right? So 
u composed i homotopic i a implies u uh, i star. This is equal to i a star, right? This implies what? Uh, this is uh, i star composed u star equal to i a star is nothing but pi 1 a x naught identity of this but this is this implies what i star is because uh, this implies that i star is so you know that if you have two maps right that compose g if this is injective then f is injective and if this is surjective, then G is surjective. So this is this is this. Uh, this is a map from pi one a x naught to pi one a x naught. So this is uh, bijective in fact. So this is it means the first one is injective. So this is injective. Now uh, uh, let uh, a B A deformation and retract of X hence uh, by definition definition uh, there is there is a retraction R from X to A such that R is a right homotopy inverse such that I R is homotopy to uh, this I X. Okay. Now R composed I uh, this is homotopic to this is homotopic to i x implies uh, i composed r star equal to i x star which implies that i star composed r star equal to i pi 1 x naught okay this implies that this is injective as well as by uh, surjective and hence this i star is surjective i star is surjective right so i star is surjective now uh, also we have uh, this since since there is a retraction from x to a right it means a is a retract of x right Since A is a retract of X, uh, we know that every retract is a weak, weak, weak retract also, right? So since A is a retract of X, A is a weak uh, retract also, right? Hence i star is injective thus i star is injective as well as subjective uh, therefore therefore i star from pi 1 a x naught to pi 1 x x naught is an isomorphism This completes the proof. This.
complete the proof. So we stop here.